this time, Jokeres through on goal again. Slade Jokeres has been my favorite since last season. Just shows why he's one of the best strikers out there. After completing his hat-trick against Manchester City in the Champions League, the world discovered Victor Jokeres. 27 goal contributions in 18 matches so far this season, it is no secret that he is balling out. With the finishing of Erling Haaland, the physicality of Lukaku, the pace of Neymar, and the stamina of Conte, he is one of the brightest talents football has produced, and at only 26 years old, he is destroying some of the most refined teams in the world. From being forced out of Brighton to becoming a top striker in the Champions League, how has he come so far? Well, in this video, I'll cover it all, but first, we have to start from the beginning. Victor Jokeres was born on June 4th, 1998 in Stockholm, Sweden, where he would grow up. He first started kicking a football around at the age of five and was playing with the local club, IFK, I can't pronounce this, I'll just call it IFK. He would spend the next nine years of his football career playing for IFK at various levels, and in 2013, he finally moved over to Brom Pushkarna. Please, just give me a break on this one. He was around 14 years old at this time, and he started to progress through the age ranks, landing a crucial spot on the under-19 squad in the 2013-14 season. Albeit, he would only make four appearances, but that wouldn't seem to be an issue. Why? Well, he scored two goals in those four appearances. Now, that doesn't seem like a crazy number, but he's playing against kids three years older than him, so realistically, a goal, if any, was worthy of a standing ovation. However, Jokeres was not finished there. I think we ain't done yet. In the next season, 2014-15, he went on a run of form that looked completely unreal. 16 goals in 17 matches in the under-19 league at 17 years old, including a stretch where he scored seven goals in six consecutive matches. To put yourself in the shoes of the academy director or something, you hear that a 17-year-old kid is putting out those kinds of numbers, you'd be pretty shocked to say the least. And the manager of the first team at the time certainly thought so. Victor Jokeres would make his professional debut for Broma against Odersud. Please don't flame me in the comments for this. Making it around a five-minute cameo. He would make substitute appearances for the rest of that season, sadly not putting any in the back of the net but he did return to the under-19s for a brief period of time and sat padded a little bit more. Gotta get those extra goals in. By this point, which is around 2015, he had left the under-19s team and had been given a more secure role in the first squad, and he would play much better this time around. That was probably because they suffered promotion from the season prior, but nonetheless, he scored his first goals for the club on 20th of August, 2015, knitting a brace in the Svensa Kupen, which is basically the Swedish Cup. In the second division now, Jokeres would score seven goals to assist Broma in a securing promotion back to Div 1, scoring in three successive matches late into the season, which were super important. Despite his age, he really played an important role in the team, and that would extend beyond league play. As Broma progressed further into the Swedish Cup, he helped his team into the semifinals when he scored the winning goal in the quarterfinals against a top division side. They got eliminated in the next round, but Jokers was finally shining through on the big stage, playing a role so big that it would ultimately shape his future. He would spend one more season with Broma, this time in the first division, and he would have to make the most of it. Scoring 13 league goals and several more in other competitions, he proved that he was an echelon above his domestic country. In September, he would finally make the big step outside the Swedish borders and sign a two and a half year deal with Brighton. He finished off his last term with Broma with 24 goals and 10 assists in all competitions, but that doesn't matter because we want to know how he did at Brighton. And I'll warn you now, it's not pretty. Jukres officially joined Brighton on the 1st of January 2018 and began training with the club's under 23 side. He made a senior debut on the 20th of August, starting in a 1 0 loss to Southampton in the EFL Cup. He'd make his FA Cup debut and a few appearances in the Premier League 2, scoring seven goals, which were completely futile because shortly after arriving, they sent him out to Germany on loan to play for St. Pauli in the Bundesliga 2. He would spend the entire 2019 20 year there and would eventually score seven goals and four assists. Jokers was a second string striker at St. Pauli, so he didn't get the most playtime in the world, averaging around 60 minutes per game. The Swedish national team thought that he would be fit for the role as a striker, and he made his national team debut against Finland on January 8, 2019, and would score his first goal for his country in the following match. When he came back from international duty, he was clearly after bigger and better things. So as he returned to Brighton, he would try, keyword, to make an impact. On the 17th of September 2020, Jokeres scored his first Brighton goal in a 4-0 victory over Portsmouth in the EFL Cup. Even though he made such an achievement, it was all for nothing as he was shipped out again on loan to Swansea for the rest of the 2020-21 season. For Swansea, he was pretty alright, I would say. He didn't play incredibly outstanding and only scored one goal. So his underperformance for the team resulted in some discontent among the Swansea staff, and at the end of the day, he was loaned out again to Coventry City this time in January. He scored on his very first appearance, scoring the first goal in an eventual 2-0 win over Sheffield Wednesday, and his first league goal in English football. And to cut this season short, he was pretty decent for the rest of the year, scoring around five goals, and Brighton recalled him back near the end of the year so that he could play a serious role in the first team. I'm just kidding, they obviously sold him off to Coventry City. They wanted nothing to do with this kid. Yokoj had really found a place to settle into and signed a permanent deal, not alone for the next three years with Coventry City. It was after this stint that he would actually find himself as the replacement for Zlatan Ibrahimovic in the national team and join them for the 2022 World Cup qualifiers, and we know how that went for Sweden. And really quick, before I get into this next chapter of the video, 
I please ask that you do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out. Thank you. Let's get back to the video. His first full year with Coventry City was the 2021-22 campaign, and things were a little different for him. For starters, he was the first choice striker and got a ton of playtime compared to his past clubs, and the role they had stuck him in, which was basically like a dynamic number nine, I guess, he excelled in that position. Seven goals in his first 10 games of the season, he was taking the championship by storm. His best attributes were his physicality, overall athleticism, which complemented his, fish his finishing abilities, forging him into a top striker in the championship. Now don't get me wrong, he wasn't anywhere near Mitrovic's 43 goals that season, but he was the 7th top scorer in the league by the end of the year, which if you ask me is pretty good for a player with his type of experience. Rolling into 2023 was one of Coventry's most prized players. I love the way he works the ball on his own from the wing and scores. Imagine him playing in the Premier League alongside a best 10 or 7. He will score more goals. Little bit of foreshadowing there. But for the time being, he was really popping off. I mean, he was named Player of the Month in November after scoring 4 goals in 4 games leading to Coventry to 4 straight wins and 3 goals and 3 assists on winning the award for the second time in March of 2023. By the end of the year, this kid had 21 goals in 46 league games, which is not something you see come out of Sweden very often. The season finished with him in second place for the Golden Boot, but he did have the most combined goals and assists in the league. With one year left on his Coventry contract and the release cost of only 20-ish million euros, he was basically on fire sale, and supporting CP, the same club that pumped up the best player of all time, signed him. It's always a good sign when talent factories like this club take a player and then instantly 5x his release clause. They must have seen something we were all missing. His debut was very, very successfully started and scored a brace against Vizela, and I guess you could say he had a pretty decent start and he, and he kept on scoring goals. Some fans were almost bored of seeing him score in the league. But as a change of pace, he made his debut in the Europa League and scored again. These incredible performances kept up and Victor Yolkresh became one of the most informed strikers on the planet. He was scoring hat-tricks, hat-tricks of assists, scoring braces became a regular occurrence. It was some numbers that were up there with the world's best. Think of Holland, Vinicius Jr. not quite on Mbappe's level. Hence, he was named the winner of the Bola de Prata, an award for being the top scorer in the league. And he also helped Sporting win their 20th league title. And that finally brings us to the 2024-25 season, where Viktor Jokic continues to destroy his competition. Let me explain. So far this season, he has scored 23 goals in all competitions, 16 goals in the league, but as he has proved, he is miles above that competition, that being the first division in Portugal. So why is everyone suddenly rating him so highly? Well, he scored a hat-trick against the all-powerful Manchester City and even more recently is tearing it up in the Nations League. Since the beginning of the season, he has demonstrated his tremendous improvement in his footballing abilities and has risen to a level beyond the Portuguese first division. His similarities in place out to a prime Luis Suarez and even a current Erling Holland has taken controversy on social media. But it's not too far off if you ask me. So what will the future hold for this kid? Well, right now his release cost is 100 million euros and that doesn't seem too expensive for a player like him. And that's considering other clubs have paid more for players of a lesser quality. And currently he is linked with Ruben Amorian's Manchester United and it seems like a good move because they could really use him. They're not doing too hot. But in the end it all boils down to how consistent Victor Jokic becomes in the rest of the season. Because I don't see him making a move in January. And anyways, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.